Here we're going to look at a very classic problem, and I've heard that it originally appeared on the 1982 Soviet Mathematical Olympiad, although I can't find an actual copy of that exam or that competition, so I don't know that for sure, but that's probably where it first appeared. And the statement goes like this, prove that for n bigger than 1, in other words, natural numbers bigger than or equal to 2, we have the following equality of sums. So we have this floor of n to the half plus the floor of n to the third all the way up to the floor of n to the 1 over n equals the log base 2 of n plus the log base 3 of n all the way up to the log base n of n. Our strategy here will be to look at a continuous version of this problem. And so what we want to do is choose either this top part of the equality or this bottom part of the equality and think about some sort of continuous function that is somehow represented by this sum, either by taking a derivative, an integral, or some sort of other algebraic combination. So we're going to actually top, take the top part of this sum, and then notice in the top part of this sum, we have a base for n in all of the terms, and then variable exponents. So we have 1 half, 1 third, all the way to 1 over n. So that motivates us to consider the following continuous function. So we'll let y equal n to the 1 over x, and then we need to look at some sort of closed interval on which x takes its values, and it might make sense to take x between 2 and n because that's what's showing up in the exponents but actually for our purposes it'll be best to expand that a little bit to 1 to n. Okay great and then some other things to notice really quick which are obvious is that if we plug in 1 into this function we get n to the 1 over 1 which is just n and so that tells us the point 1 comma n is on the graph of this and then furthermore it's pretty easy to see is if we take the limit as x goes to infinity of n to the 1 over x, that's equal to 1. So I'll let you guys think about that. That's pretty easy to check. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and look at the graph of this. So notice, like we said, if we're here at 1, we're up here at this point n. So that means this point is on the graph. And then furthermore, if we let x go to 0 from the right, we're going to be asymptotic to 0. So maybe let's add that as well. So the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of n to the 1 over x is plus infinity. So we've got a vertical asymptote like that. And then we have a horizontal asymptote right here. So now we can put that together to notice that our graph is going to have this kind of shape. So now, like I said, we're going to look for a, a continuous version of this sum. So an obvious continuous version of this sum would be the area under this curve from 1 to n. So we could draw this in like the following way. Great. So like I said, uh, this continuous version of our sum n to the 1 half plus all the way up to n to the 1 over n would be given by this integral 1 to n. And I'm going to go ahead and add n to the 1 over 1 to the front of this because we're expanding this of n to the 1 over x dx. Okay. Fantastic. So now the next thing that we want to do is instead of integrating along the x-axis, we want to integrate this along the y-axis and see what we get for the integral in that case. And I think we'll see that we get something pretty similar to this right-hand sum. So we want to start with this equation up here. So we have y equal n to the 1 over x. So taking the natural log of both sides, that tells us that the natural log of y equals 1 over x, the natural log of n, using our exponent rules, but moving everything around, we easily see that that means x equals the natural log of n divided by the natural log of y, which is really equal to the log base y of n. So that's our function x as a function of y. So it's kind of funny to have a variable base, but it does make sense as long as we are bigger than 1. So let's go ahead and point that out. This makes sense for n strictly bigger than 1. 
So now what we want to do is represent this area right here. So the area of this, which we've represented as this integral, in terms of an integral uh, with respect to y. In other words, we're taking this orange curve and we're noticing that this orange curve is either y equals n to the 1 over x or it's x equals the log base y of n. Those are two representations of that curve. Let's clean up this little portion of our calculation so that we can do that. So we just proved that if y equals n to the 1 over x, then x equals log base y of n. And then the area of this region is given by the integral from 1 to n of n to the 1 over x dx. Now we want to put this in terms of an integral with respect to y. But that's a little bit tricky because notice we have, we have this thing being bound by two different curves on the right hand side. First of all, up to this point right here, it's bound by the curve which is x equals n, but then above that point, it's bound by the curve x equals log base y of n. So we're actually kind of okay there. So uh, let's go ahead and write this up. So this is going to be, uh, so this area will be equal to the integral from 1 to this question mark point, which we need to figure out. I'll just put that over here. This is our question mark of our right-hand curve, which is n, and our left-hand curve, which is 1. So it's n minus 1 dy. Okay, great. And then plus the integral from this question mark curve up to n of this log base y of n minus 1. Good. And then dy. And so that's the right-hand curve minus the left-hand curve. Notice the left-hand curve is x equals 1. So now we just need to figure out what that point is. But this point isn't too hard to find because it's what we get if we plug x equals n into our original thing up here. So here we'll have n to the 1 over n. Down here we'll have n to the 1 over n. Okay, and notice that these two are equal to each other. Okay, great. So I'm going to clean up the board. We're going to kind of summarize this continuous version. And then um, after that, we will finally solve our actual given problem. Exploring a continuous version of our goal, we found the equality of these two expressions involving integrals, either integrating along the x-axis to give us this left-hand side, or um, integrating along the y-axis to give us this right-hand side. Now, what I want to notice is that this thing over here is somewhat of a discrete version of this continuous thing that we solved. So now what I want to find is this left-hand side of this equation and this right-hand side of this equation somehow within this picture. And the trick here is instead of finding the area of this shaded region, what we want to do is find the number of integer valued points in this shaded region. So let's think about it. If we're along this line x equals 1, how many integer valued points do we have? Well, we have this one right here that's at 1. We have another one up here at 2. We have another one up here at the y equals 3, all the way up here to this one, which is the point 1n. So in other words, along this line, we have n integer valued points. But now let's go over here to an arbitrary point along the x-axis. Maybe we'll say x equals um, p. So notice we're going to have 1 here at this point right here, which is p comma 1. And then we're going to have as many as we can get up until this point up here. But let's recall that this point up here is of the form p comma n to the 1 over p. Great. So you might say, well, how many integer points do we have between 1 and p to the 1 over p? Well, we have the greatest integer, which is smaller than n to the 1 over p. So in other words, the number of integer points along this vertical line will be the floor of n to the 1 over p. Okay, great. And this works for all p values that are between 1 and n. So in fact, along this line right here, we're going to have n to the 1 over n integer points. 
So let's add that up. So this horizontal counting of integer points gives us the following. So we have n from this first column and then plus the floor of n to the half because that's what's happening at the vertical line two plus the floor of n to the one third plus all the way up to the floor of n to the one over n. So that's what we get if we add along all of those vertical lines. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and box this off. And then the next thing that I want to do is do some horizontal counting of integer points. So notice that this horizontal line right here will give us everything with a y coordinate of 1 and then x coordinates of 1 through n. So that means that's going to give us n along this line right here. So let's maybe put that in blue. So we have n points along that line right there. Great. And then let's maybe go up here to an arbitrary point. So let's call this maybe q along the y-axis. And so we're going to get this point right here, which is on the vertical line, x equals 1. And then we're going to go and get all the points that we can until we hit the curve. But notice this curve with y coordinate q has x coordinate log base q of n by our previous calculation. So if we're trying to fit as many integer points as we can until we hit this curve, well, we're going to get the number that is equal to the greatest integer smaller than that. In other words, we're going to get the floor of log base q of n. And that's going to be true for all integers between 1 and n right here. So, in other words, by vertical counting, we're going to get n plus the log base 2 of n, the floor of that. That's what's happening here at n equals 2, plus all the way up to the log base n of n. That's what's happening at this uh, very top point up here, which is y equals n. Okay, great. And so that's what we get for vertical counting of integer points. But now what we've done is we've counted all the integer points that are in this shaded region, but we've done it two different ways. But obviously it doesn't matter how you count them, you get the same thing. And so that means that this expression right here is equal to this expression right here. But if you cancel the ends on both sides, you get exactly the result that we need. Okay, great, so that's a good place to stop.